Hey church family, I hope that y'all are doing well. Uh, this is our midweek service for October the 14th. Uh, Pastor Gary is away on vacation and so I'm stepping in for him and I'm glad to be here with you all today. I do have some prayer concerns that I want to bring to your attention. Uh, a few days ago, I mentioned that um, Robert McGee was going to be having surgery on Tuesday of this week. He actually, the surgery was rescheduled for today. Um, and so I have not heard yet how that went or um, if he is out of that surgery yet. I plan on talking with Miss Sarah this afternoon um, just to check in and see how things are going. But we just ask that you remember him in your prayers. Also, uh, Jimmy Allen had his procedure this past Thursday, so last week. Um, he is doing well. I spoke with him this morning. He said that he is not in pain, so we're very grateful for that. And he will meet with his radiation therapist uh, next week to set up a treatment plan for him. Um, and so he just says thank you so much uh, to everyone who has sent cards or has prayed. He asks that you continue to lift him up in prayer as he can feel the power of those prayers. So thank you for doing that and please continue to just remember him in your prayers. Uh, Debbie McFarland continues to recover at home. Um, we just ask that you continue to pray for her and if you feel led to do so, reach out to her and um, just let her know you're thinking about her. I'm sure she would greatly appreciate that. Um, Catherine Reagan remains on our ongoing prayer list. Catherine finished uh, infusion treatments at the hospital last week, um, so we're very grateful for that. But she will have to continue some other treatments um, in the coming months. And so we just ask that you pray for her as, as she goes through those treatments and that she would continue to respond well um, to the medicine and the care that she is receiving. We also ask that you continue to remember Lisa Phillips in your prayers as well. Now, would you go to God in prayer with me? Gracious and loving God, we come to you today and want to lift up all of those that we have mentioned just a few moments ago. We pray for healing. We pray for the doctors who are working with each individual and for their teams. We pray for wisdom and for discernment for each of those professionals as they seek to treat each and every person the best way they know how. God, I pray for those who are not on this list but are in need of your comfort and love today. There are many who are hurting or are facing trials that we don't know about, God, but we know that you know. We pray that you would give them the strength and the courage that they need in their lives. And now I pray that we would take a moment to pause out of our busy weeks and that we would just take a moment to listen and to hear a word from you. God, we love you and we thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I mentioned all the prayer requests that we had just a few moments ago, and I just want to mention to you all that if you ever have a prayer concern that you would like added to our list, uh, please feel free to call the church office and let our secretary, Kathy, know um, that you have a prayer concern and what that prayer concern is, or you can always reach out to me or Gary and let us know as well. We love being able to lift everyone up in prayer and, and each need is so important and we take it um, so seriously and so we just want to let you know that we're always here if, if you need our prayers. Uh, I would like for you to open your Bibles if you have one handy um, and we're going to be looking at the book of Philippians chapter 2 and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4 today. Uh, this week I'm going to be talking about encouragement and we can find God offering encouragement to his people time and time again throughout the Bible uh, through his gracious acts of mercy, generosity, and protection, even when people have disobeyed him time and time again. Um, but today I want us to focus on this particular passage. And so, like I said, if you have your Bibles, just open it to Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 4. Um, I have the NIV Bible 
um, New International Version that I like to use, and so that's what I'm going to be using today. It says this, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. I think that we could all <laughs> use some encouragement right about now. Wouldn't you say? How about some comfort? Well, in this particular passage, Paul is pointing us to understand that we can find encouragement and comfort in being like-minded with that of Christ Jesus. So, how do we do that? How do we seek to be like that of Jesus, God's Son? First, I believe we have to read His Word. God has given us what we need right in the words of this book. When I was growing up, I learned that I could go to the back of my Bible, to the concordance, and find particular words of things that I might be struggling with. And so, um, for example, today we're talking about encouragement. And so if I was needing some encouragement or wasn't sure what the Bible had to say about that, I would flip over to the back of my Bible and I would take a look and look up those verses and see what it said. Um, that was something that would really help me and help me to go in a specific direction of, of what it is that I was looking for. And so that was something that, that really helped me. Um, secondly, I believe that we can do exactly what this text says that we just read just a few moments ago in Philippians 2. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Do you truly put others before yourself? I'll share a story or an example with you. Um, I love being able to go on trips with our, our kids and with our youth. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do whether it's a week-long mission trip or a weekend retreat. Um, our kids love being able to get away, and it's, it's such a fun time. But one thing that is always inevitable whenever we go somewhere, most likely we're going to have to stop for food somewhere along the way, whether it's on the way back or on the way there or during the week. Um, we're going to have to make a pit stop, and we're going to have to get some food together. Um, most of the time, it's at a fast food restaurant because they can accommodate us and it's quick. Um, but taking a big group of teenagers or children into a, a restaurant like that is a little bit intimidating. <laughs> if you've never done it, um, to be completely honest, it can be a little bit unnerving because you come in and people look at you like, first of all, why do you have all these kids? What is, what is going on? Um, but then they're also looking at you like, I hope you can keep these kids under control because we're trying to eat and we don't need you interrupting us. <laughs> and so um, one of my favorite things to do when we go to a restaurant like that is to break out what I call the fast pass. And so um what I do is I simply go up to um, someone who is in line behind us. So like if all the kids are in line and there's a group of like, so let's say we have 20 people and they're in line. And so each kid has to order what they want. Um, it can take a little while. And so I go up to the person who's behind us and I say, 
would you like a fast pass? And they look at me like, what in the world are you talking about? And I quickly explain, <laughs> I'm, I'm these kids' youth minister. Um, they're not my biological children, but they're my kids. And we're on a trip and I would like for you to go to the front of the line so you don't have to wait for all of us because um, it might it might be a little while. Their whole demeanor changes when I say that. And they often say thank you multiple times before they even leave the restaurant. Um, it makes such a difference and it's something that is simple but it's so appreciated because they recognize that we are putting them first um it's something that's not often done you know if we see a big group of people in line and people don't often say hey come on up here and you get on ahead of us um, and so it's something that sticks out and it's even better when we get to say you know this is this is a church group and we, we would like to do this for you. We would like to be kind and offer this as a way of helping you out. And then finally, I believe that we can take on the mindset of Christ when we choose to encourage others around us. Um, this Sunday, I'm going to go further into that when I um, do the sermon and talk to y'all a little bit in detail about that. But we're going to talk about three ways that we can encourage others. And I believe we can do that um, using our words, with our actions, and with our attitude. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more on Sunday, and I hope that you'll join us for that. Um, but until we meet again on Sunday morning, <laughs> I want to challenge you to think of some ways that you can actively encourage others this week. It could be through sending a card to someone that you haven't spoken to lately. Um, maybe they need some cheering up or you know of someone that could just use a, hey, I hope you're having a great week. Um, I think we could all use that sometimes. Or maybe you could make a phone call and just say, hey, do you have anything that I could pray for you about? I think that that can be something very powerful that we can do um, for our church family and for our friends. And then maybe it's doing a random act of kindness, like paying for someone who's in the line behind you in the drive through or letting someone go in front of you when you're in line at the grocery store or something, something simple like that. But it can, it can really mean a lot. However you choose to encourage someone this week, I bet it won't go unnoticed and it will certainly help you as you strive to be like Jesus. Jesus tells us that we are to love God and we are to love others. Those are the two greatest commandments. And so I truly believe that we can show others love when we encourage them. And these are just some ways that you can do that. And if you do choose to encourage someone this week, um, I want you to tell me about it. Let me know how it went. How did you, how did you choose to do that? How, what was that experience like for you? Was it positive? Um, was it something that um, made you feel good as well? Um, it's, it's nice to be able to give to others and to, to encourage um, it often lifts me up as well. I appreciate y'all tuning in and listening today for our midweek service. And I would like to offer a prayer for you um, as you go. But I would just also remind you that we do have several worship opportunities this weekend. So if you'd like to join us here on YouTube, we'll have that service up on Sunday morning. Um, we have in-person worship at 10 o'clock. Um, and so you can come in for that service if that's something that you would like to do. Or we'll have outside worship at 11 o'clock as well as our um, FM converter. So if you'd like to drive up and sit in your car, you can do that as well. So I just pray that you would take full advantage of one of those many opportunities to worship together this Sunday. Um, as we talk a little bit more about how we can encourage one another. But now I would like to 
offer a prayer for you as you go. So would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that if we will take the time to open your word, that we can be filled with encouragement. I pray that we would all make more time to do that, not only so that we can lift ourselves up, but so that we can know how we can better lift each other up. Help us to be lights for you in this world that can sometimes seem very dark. Help us to seek to always be like-minded with you, O oh God, in our words, in our actions, in our attitude. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go in peace.